Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You're looking at the beautiful city of Chengdu, and look at the neon lights that light up the night sky. We're coming back for our third series of Rogue Warriors and OMG, which, of course, we're going to be running in full. Hysterics, Preacher, we're going to jump into this first game, but before, we're going to look at picks and bans, because this, man, this is how we start. Look at the styles picked up for Rogue Warriors. Hell yeah. And... That is a Silas mid. Yep. And more importantly, it's also a very tanky front line with a Nami as support. So we haven't really seen that come into the LPL either. That's it's going to potentially be very dangerous. That's one guy for you, man. You know, Raz calls him an old man, but I'll tell you what, he remembers the days of Nami. And so should you all. We see another victor in there as well for OMG. Uh, I believe that is a Caitlyn, not a Callista, excuse me. So there's a different champion. So Caitlyn, Nami Ooh. lane. Even better. A lot of poke, a lot of lane impression. We're going to jump straight into this one. OMG and Rogue Warriors. Now both teams, like this is the point where you say, what do we look like in summer? Well, you we got to ask the question. Before. Oh, hang on. Oh, here we go. What Icon you look has at? Vayne mid. Wait that's, a that's second. That's not even a Victor mid. That's a Vayne mid for Icon. Yes, I love LPL. Send me into the magic. Bring me into the 29th century. I want to see what happens with Vayne versus Silas mid. The crowd has lost. We're waiting for it. No, the, no. the crowd's... When, when we've heard so many Rogue Warriors chants amidst different series, and now it comes to a Rogue Warriors chant, and no <laughs> one's willing to do it. You know what? I'm going to walk down... I can't. It's in Chengdu. No. I'm going to walk to Chengdu <laughs> yeah, from here. and scream at myself. Uh, the vein mid is going to be talked about before we do uh, mention Hua Tien on his first Silas, because it's an aftershock for Silas, by the way. But Ooh. the only other person in the LPL spring to play Vayne mid was Scout, and it was into the Galio as a specific matchup. This into the Silas makes sense, but it's still going to be an interesting matchup with that. It's range. It means that you can always poke out the Silas, but another thing is that Silas stealing a Vayne's ultimate only really gets the AD, can't really use the tumble to its maximum efficiency, so it still does work out for the side of OMG. It's going to be... a pretty much soft counter, but it is up to uh, Icon to outplay at 1v1, because if he doesn't actually manage to do so, then this could definitely be turned around very quickly, especially with an Olaf bearing down into a Vayne solo lane. Yeah, absolutely. I will correct myself as well, because Icon has played this once before, uh, so it is not his first Vayne, but it's still such a rarity to see this in the mid lane. Taking heal into the teleport of Quartian, so survivability in this lane, and then it's gone for the biscuits, for the boots. And of course, Inspiration Tree being the safest option here. Yeah, but what's the trade-off, Hysterics? Because when you take a look into the bottom lane, Wuji has taken a heal, whereas there's a teleport onto Chelly. Sure, Chelly could just get out by 5, and 5 has heal as well. It does mean, however, that the main carry in the bottom lane is going to be put into a lot of strife, especially considering that the only escape is the eat from Tom Kench, and after that, there's not a whole lot saving this victor. Very true. Victor in the bottom lane once again. Uh, out of Chelly, you know, to be expected as Jung Chow in the top lane. Oh, yeah. This is a game where you expect... Okay, Renekton's going to have the shove. Vayne going to have the range advantage until we see uh, bigger levels of the uh, Kingslayer with a combination of abscond and abduct for the Silas. And, of course, the bottom lane with Wuji and Huang Gai, the Nami Caitlyn having the natural push. Obviously, it's going to push forward, but one of the things that I want to take a look onto the map is actually the jungle matchup. Now, we've seen Jarvan and Olaf so many times, especially in today, so you might be wondering, why do you want to focus on that matchup? But it's because Penguin doesn't actually play a whole lot of Jarvan. He's been known for the Xin Zhao and also Ooh. for the Kindred, so this is special for him. It really is. Forced out by Zhao Yao as well. He has priority in the bottom lane. Uh, Penguin just has to get out of there with the level disadvantage as well. Going for the bit of an invade. Penguin... Back to his own jungle now. Full clear there from Zhao Yao, and he's just going to have to back away. Zhao Yao, excuse me, my mispronunciation. Uh, backing away now, picking up boots for his first back. Just want to see what sort of playstyle Penguin goes for, because obviously he's been known as a carry player, likes to do damage in the back line for his team, but with the Jarvan, he has to play a much more CC-oriented gank uh, and teamfight-favored playstyle. So... 
It'll be branching out for Penguin at the very least, because it'll be him showing that he's not just a one-trick in terms of play, he can actually provide multiple utility for the team, and that's really what makes you a huge threat, and also a huge uh, benefactor for the team, because they want to keep you on the main roster. Of course, good old Penguin came in uh, a while back. We stopped seeing Best 16, uh, ironically, right after his Riven jungle game, so... <laughs> I don't know what happened there, but uh, still changing it up. For OMG and Rogue Warriors, remember, this is about stability of how your roster can be in the future splits. And we're looking towards summer for Rogue Warriors and for OMG. Is it Jung Chao who facilitates the role better? Is it Zhao Yun who plays a hell of a clear top? Looks like Jung Chao has been kind of the go-to. Uh, Ale as well, been back and forth with uh, Xiang in the top lane, but... Boy, that's a dangerous matchup already. Look, Abscondom Duck, this is what we said. Higher levels on Hua Tien, it's even more dangerous for Icon. Not too sure what exactly Icon is doing, pushed so far forward into this matchup, especially when his jungler has just backed and is now walking into the mid lane to try and help him. Icon is definitely putting up a bit of an aggressive fight, way too aggressive for a vain early game for my liking, but it does really Whoa. signify that he's used to this fit. Into the belly, spat back out, a slobber, yep, drops to the ground. Jiao Yan's nearby. And I just want to talk about the fact that 5 as well, you knew that it was 5 before we even got into the game because it's not an Alistar, so we can pretty much assume that it's not going to be Shwan on the side of OMG. The reunion was there, Preacher. The three-man reunion. The reunion we could have done was it. there. That's all right. Uh, Shwan, of course, if you don't know, he's been coming into the OMG lineup as support, filling in for 5. Uh, but it looks like they brought Chelly and 5 back together once again. But in this game, lineup not looking too well in the bottom lane. Naturally, the push coming through from the Nami and the Caitlyn. Very oppressive lane. Uh, pretty much unlimited sustain for the Nami. Ability power, and plus the, the mana regen that comes through from your support item, plus the fairy charm that I know he'll pick up. He just never run out. He's playing like the standings. <laughs> Uh, for these two teams. So to catch everybody up, it's 2-9 and nine for OMG and it's 4-9 and nine for Rogue Warriors. So Rogue Warriors definitely sitting in a much better position. And it's not just that, but when you see the draft as well, you can see that they've prepared slightly more strategies for their team and it's working out in the early game because uh, a whole lot is being denied away from OMG. Well, Preacher, frankly, they're both out. So it doesn't matter what position, really. Uh, but, you know, further to your point, Rogue Warriors have had more success with some of the greater teams. Beating RNG for them was uh, definitely the highlight so far, especially with Wuji and the rest of Rogue Warriors are the Baron Steel Kings. Still tied with LGD for first position, by the way, on four Baron Steel, or five. It's something insane. Uh, I'm glad to see that Rogue Warriors, as a team, they're going, all right, cool. We've had success with the bottom lane. How can we facilitate that? All right, let's try one guy. This game, not bad. 30 CS to lead. Not too bad. And he's not really yet known as a tank player. He's known much more as a mage player. Came on massive with his Morgana when he first came on uh, in his series. But uh, he's shown that he can pretty much play whatever is available, even if it isn't really something that can provide a whole lot more his team in the middle of team fights. And I say that even with Anami because one of the biggest reasons why we don't see too many mage supports is because it's dangerous to get down vision for your team as the later the game goes. But into the composition of OMG, there's no burst that's really threatening uh, Huang Guy, so he can still do that with relative safety. Didn't actually mention that Huang Guy, he's taking Guardian into this matchup. I think we saw the Inspiration second, or it would have been Sorcery at the very least to be expected from Huang Guy. But Guardian. You know, a lot of the time, it's been the airy, it's been the... Well, we don't see Nami's in competitive play, so... <laughs> yeah, it's definitely the airy pickup. Solo so. Q Nami, has got to be... is airy for sure. It's mainly picked up because he's always going to be standing near Wuji, and he wants to make sure that the poke coming out from Victor's laser early game isn't really going to chunk down his ADC, but the fact that he's a Nami anyway, with that uh, ebb and flow, is already testament to the fact that he doesn't need to worry in terms of uh, the health discrepancy in laning phase. Gonna be easy with the sustain, Penguin. Yeah, he just backs right away. Not gonna burst Jiao, yeah. Get out of there. Penguin. There's no. He's actually behind a jungle as well. He looks a bit lost because he's not on a carry champion, and so. The whole of OMG are behind here. 800 gold already. This is absolutely insanity. Wuji, it's happening again. Caitlyn's tonight are going nuts. Yeah, Nami 1v1. Level 6 as well. Tidal Wave is available. I call it the Tsunami, which we're about to see live in action. Jiao Yao's behind them. There's no vision on him. Oh, no. Look at the collapse. Penguin. Flag and Dragon available. Tsunami! 
Penguin locked on up. Gravity surge, build, out, down, five, out. Penguin gone. But still, one guy took a lot of damage, and that is Derek. You gotta take something away from that. I don't know what you take away, but the fact that uh, this Nami gets chunked down so massively, maybe not as strong as the tank supports that we were looking forward well, to. Well, of course, it'll be fine. Lot of sustain there for one guy, but he's run out of mana in this lane while we see the one on one. Hua Tien, he's Why got the veil. The yep. Tumble. Go for it. Go on. No, he's already used it. It's oh, fine. Man. It's gonna run out. So, ultimate down for Hua Tien as Penguin comes in and threatens a mid lane. Not gonna lie, it's Derek. Don't. That was pretty lackluster. <laughs> There's a steal in the vein ulti. It didn't really do anything at all, so. I think that this was the intention of the matchup with Vayne in the mid lane to make sure that Silas couldn't use his ultimate. But look but at what else is available. I mean, this is a game for ultimates for the Silas. Yeah. Tom Kench ulti has the Victor Chaos Storm, Cataclysm. Like, the tumble is the worst one, which is fair. So the laning phase doesn't look great for the Silas. But as soon as he moves out, Scion ulti as well. They can race each other. Man. I wonder who's faster. Probably the actual Scion, right? I mean, the actual... I, I think it's the same movement speed. That is a good question, though, isn't it? That's a very good question. Only one way to test it out. A Scion Speedway <laughs> with the two of them. Slash all. Meet yes. Me, meet me in River. Meet me in River. Let's go. Of course, we're not going to do that because that is competitive. It is competitive play, so I'd rather not. Uh, I'd rather see what this Silas goes first. Should be a proto belt here for Poitien, but... Oh, we've known Silas? Yep, all right. Let's see what comes second. Because I want to see... <laughs> I want to see... It's an interesting Silas' build. You're going up against a team that uh, has a large portion of 80 damage there. And of course, the uh, true damage from the Silver Bullets. Chelly is facilitating the AP damage with the Victor. But uh, what comes next is going to be my big question. What I want to see, Sorg Boots. What I'm probably going to see, Ninja Tommy. That's probably what's going to happen in the mid lane. Huajian is still playing a competitive game. Still does want to win this, even though... Uh, it is a little bit of an entertaining matchup into the vein as well. So uh, all in all, it's going to have to come down to smart itemization. I think that Rogue Warriors have shown a little bit of success with the fact that they can change up their plans mid-game. But that's pretty much all uh, that you can really say for both of these two teams. Because like you mentioned, they're pretty much out of contention. Well, no, players. I mean, for Rogue Warriors, the thing that excites me about this team is that they're young Warriors. Uh, uh, you know, Raz and I were talking about this a, a while back. It was actually a day that it wasn't a while <laughs> But, you know, their potential is so, so high. Someone like Wuji comes up from the LDL. First split looks incredible in some of his games. Even Hua Tien has improved as he might have to do so oh, now. That heal. Kingslayer heals him so much. Flashes away. It's gone. Wait a, a second. Stuck. Outplayed. My Lord Silas needs to be destroyed. Hua Tien goes out, comes back in, locks down Icon. You saw the two rings around him. Where's the third one for the proposal? Doesn't happen. Hua Tien gets to live through all of that. Stop it, Penguin. Oh, no. Hua Tien has a cataclysm. Demacia. Oh, come on. He's just shouting it out, spamming it away. Hua Tien level 10. That was insane. Kingslayer got a buff this patch as well. More healing earlier on. I mean, we're seeing it right now. That was pretty much what saved him in that 1v1 before it turned into a 1v2. Now, Infernal Dragon's just open to you. And why not? Rogue Warriors have a 1500 gold lead. They can do this again. Look, he has a Cataclysm. Demacia? Penguin no, okay. wants to escape, but Huatian's threatening him. He has to disengage. Huatian is three levels over Penguin, and Wuji with the priority in the bottom lane can run up to this Infernal and secure another objective. Yeah, don't forget that Silas still does build predominantly AP and... The Jarvan ultimate does scale with AD, so it doesn't do the most damage. It's for functionality more than anything else. If you use the flag and drag away, and Silas locks you in your own cage, you're done. Absolutely done. Like Icon was here. Yeah, so Icon manages to get the good outplay because he doesn't actually get engaged on by Huat yet, and he uses his ulti because he wants to go for the re-engage. <laughs> and you think that he's dead, but then the flash goes out to make sure that he doesn't take any more damage. My. And the lockdown. That predict, he saw the flash coming. But God, that was such a good predict from Hua Tien. That he... feels so bad for you if you're Icon, because you're just wondering. You're like, okay, I get two more hits down onto him, and he's dead, and then straight back in onto your face. You're versing Icon as well. Hua Tien's versing Icon. A prestigious name in the LPL. And he's winning the matchup. Do we say this is just Silas' things at this moment? Because it is a very strong nah. champion, admittedly, but... Into Icon, you might as well also say that this could have been a fumble and pick a bet. Oh, here we go. Vayne Ultimate's out. Cataclysm as well. Icon stuck in the pit. Kingslayer gives him a bit of the healing, but teleports a little bit too late. Icon finds it, and Penguin 
Shouts out Demacia again. It was a double Demacia as well to lock him down, but you know for certain that Vayne uses that to his maximum efficiency. He actually gets a Condemn down, which means that uh, Hua Tian gets locked up. A very humorous interaction that ultimately left Hua Tian a little bit less than happy with that interaction. Of course, it means Icon gets his lane back as well. Penguin can walk up to the old crab uh, Shelly. What are you? Oh, I'd say it's a crab, right? It's a crab, the right? Rift is She's a, a big crab. crab. Yeah. To that be is, honest. You know, that's a crab, right? You know, we've seen a whole lot of uh, importance placed on the vision coming out from Scuttle Crab. I'd like to see an Elder Scuttle. Ooh, more Demacia coming right at you. Ragnarok, Silver Bullets, one, two. Icon doesn't have the flash <laughs> to follow up. And yeah, see you later. Yeah, all right. So that could have been... That could have potentially been dangerous. I don't know why Rogue Warriors is actually standing around here because they've got fewer members in terms of raw numbers. They can't really contest onto this front. They should be looking more to make plays on the opposite side wherever Penguin isn't. But as a result, they're just evening things up and making sure that nothing actually happens from Penguin's productivity anyway. Look at how the game's gonna go. The Vayne, Victor. You're in a good place. You've got a great front line if you're OMG. Okay. Yeah, it steals another ultimate. He's just roaming so he finds them. A bit of turret plating there for Rogue Warriors though. Two and one. Arguably, this is the best ultimate coming out for Hua Tien because oh, I'll Scales argue an ultimate. that for sure. Yeah. All right, not too sure why we're seeing these numbers because uh, it's not yeah. impressive, to be honest. What do you mean? 480. 480. That's half of a thousand. It's wow. It's literally it's the, a long sword. It's quite literally the lead for Rogue Warriors. Like 300 plus a bit of a lane. That's fine. We're good. It's a lead. I take the gold any day. Kao Storm. Booyah! Icon does take damage from this, so you're right, the AP scaling coming to effect once again. Now, for some reason, it says Hua Tien still has him. He doesn't anymore. Yeah. Cataclysm is Jarvan this time, as Xiaoyo just gets burnt on down. It's gone, abduct Penguin. Kingslayer can oh, damage the wall. Get out, played! Wait a Almost second! Almost takes his own life. But Icon, bubble doesn't land. Following up, here comes Zhang Chao, flashes forward as well, slice and dice. And one guy picks that one up with an army. As the bubble has already been locked on down, the Aqua Prison not available for one guy. He has to flash. The Chaos Storm comes as well. With Jung Chao unable to defend this turret. He's level 11, but is he going to stick around? This is so risky. Managed to get the wave clear. It was predominantly happy feet coming out from Icon because he didn't actually get caught in the bubble, which led to him surviving the later half of that play. But all in all, OMG, oh, they are yeah. moving. Jelly. Take it. Ready? And again. Licky tongue. Bang. Smash. Beautiful from Wasn't OMG. even a smash, that was a flick. That was a flick of the wrist. Yeah. Ali comes in. He's got a nice one gauntlet, by the way, and so he should. OMG right back on this map after getting away from this bottom lane of Wuji. They may lose the turret, but they win the war. They get the better part of that engage. So we have to watch for Hua Tien trying to 1v1 Icon without respecting that Penguin is around, despite the fact that uh, Xiao Yao is here. Now it's all up to one guy to try and help. That was the first bubble, unfortunately didn't hit down onto Icon. Allowed Icon to free fire. Watch him just hit down Hua Tien right here. And it's the second bubble that also doesn't hit onto Icon that allows him to live that we Man, don't get to see. Dodging away from the tsunami. That was insane. Like some good tumbly dumbles from uh, Icon. 2-1 and 2. Blade of the Ruin King. Give him the Gwinsus. Vein mid looks great. And... I'm going to pull up, you know, I quote a lot about Raz. I'll quote Clement this time. He likes uh, Silas mid. I don't know if, I don't think Raz does. So I want them to fight. But more than that, I'm looking at Silas mid here and I'm going, Hua Tien, all right, you're level 12. What's going to happen next? You've got to start roaming a lot more. And the Silas is losing out at the moment due to the jungle pressure from the mid lane. It's just an awkward situation because whenever you talk about playing champs in the mid lane, you've got to talk about the matchups and the meta matchups. Doesn't work well for Vayne, doesn't work well for Silas either, so they're lucky that they're versing each other. Silas is pretty much a situation in which you get the heal back damage that you get poked down from, but why do you need to take poke in the first place? Why can't you poke them? But once you get to level 6, baby, that level 6 really does have an impact because you're just so versatile, you can go anywhere on the map. Right back onto Jung Chao. Mr. Voyage is here as well. Okay. Has to pop the Dominus, but Tomasi comes back down. And look, the Silas can't drop his. Hua Tian is down for the count. OMG is dialing on this mid game of Rogue Warriors. And I need to see that replay again, because I don't know how deep Penguin went, but he shouldn't have died because he had Stopwatch in his possession. Oh, that's a... Is it though? Well, it's fortunate for Rogue Warriors because it means well, that they no longer I have mean, to you wait. You already got the bottom lane turret. Yeah, 3k gold. No, two, two, two and a bit here for OMG. 19 minutes in and 
I'm starting to see the love for the vein mid. I'm starting to see Chelly, uh, first victor tonight that's been successful. Yeah, so here's Penguin actually engaging down, and he's finally starting to tank the turret hits right now. So, wow, that's, <laughs> I'm gonna admit that's yeah. a lot of burst. So there's not a whole lot of replay so in terms of using your uh, using your stopwatch. Hard to predict as well. Icon just playing this out beautifully. He's only died once in the laning phase, and now he's looking for more blood. And what the end? Look at this roaming bait. One, two, this is three, four. What? This is a thumb war if I've ever seen it. Abscond, the duck, Kingslayer lives. Excuse me? But no, that's a big trade. Icon gives the bounty over to Olaf. Excuse me? How can an, how can Icon on a vein actually make these roaming plays? Walks into the lane, doesn't actually care about anything else. He says, Watian, you're mine. 1v1 me. Watian's right. Like, no, please, dude. But there's a passive on the vein that allows him to chase. <laughs> yeah, this is just, uh, this is bullying. Yeah, pretty impressive. Again, the Silas takes another death. Watian. Started out so nicely with that cool outplay with the help of your jungle. But now zero and four. This is not the Silas you want to see. So just Alagas picked up and 20 minutes in the game. A lot of threat here from OMG around the mid lane looking for the dive with the overextend from Rogue Warriors. Now it's all up to OMG because it is really their game to lose. Check it out. It's not the biggest gold lead, but they've got enough such that they should feel comfortable taking all of these fights and initiating them as well. We were talking about the massive first pick of the Silas for Watian, but hasn't come into fruition just yet. And so far, if OMG can bank on that not existing, then they're in a very good spot. We know that Silas typically played in that top lane as we talked about before. Chain Lash, yeah, get that blue buff. So what's going to happen now at Ocean Drake, the response? Waiting for that Baron. I feel like we have an early Baron potential. Could well do, because of the gold lead, but you got to watch out for all of the vision that is being placed. Rogue Warriors do have this spotted out, and the gold isn't significant enough that OMG can just win a flat-out 5v5 with Baron debuff on them, so uh, caution all around. Caution from who? Tidal Wave. To the side. Redemption back in as well. Wuji. 90 caliber net will net him to safety. This is Jiao Yao just going to clear out vision. Disengage from Chelly. Mid lane still under fire. No one really sitting in the side lanes. Something that we've criticized a lot in the LPL is a side lane control, which OMG going to now have to deal with. Finally, Rogue Warriors. Okay. Oh, That's uh, That is the Sonyas from Huat Tien though. Locked on. Isle. Oh, Ali, his name is. Heap of play. No. Cataclysm. What is it? It's just confusion here as Icon starts knocking away. OMG, the fight is theirs with Icon still free hitting the vein. 1v1, oh 1v2, Lord. 1v3, oh. 1v4! Oh my god, Icon, you are a monster! This is what happens when a vein mid gets an early lead. Cleans house, Baron is going to be theirs after the mid lane gets pushed up. No, OMG just left that fight to Icon. Ladies and gentlemen, fan it out, because if you don't, you're going to be seeing a lot of vain mids in your solo queue. Right now, Icon is putting up a game of his life. He is currently using the lead that Penguin gave him so well. A quadra kill in that last team fight. Man, what can you say other than the fact that one kill on a vain mid, yeah, that might be a little bit lull, but right now, it is focused. Now we're going to see what's going on. The fight started with... Rogue Warriors get engaged on by the side. Yeah, and now Icon is coming into the side, and sure, there's a bubble that goes down onto OMG, but it's actually placed onto Penguin. No CC, no damage onto Icon. Watch him free fire. The biggest competition is Wuji, but even then, can't see him in stealth. Uses his ultimate Q to his maximum Woo. efficiency. Takes out the Quadra. Ah, uh, it was sick from Icon. Eight, two, and three. Three items on the vein. Icon's even got a giant belt of health. Uh, I'm I'm <laughs> gonna guess that is a frozen mallet yep. coming next from Icon. The classic toaster vein build, where you just try to bust down people slowly and give them no counterplay opportunity. I, uh, Icon is having a really fun game because usually when you get ahead this far on a vein, there's not a lot that can stop you. You're into a Caitlyn and also a Silas. Neither of those two champs can particularly hit you with their skill shots. If you're wondering about Silas into vein, if you're wondering how the matchup develops over the game, well. Uh, this is more or less an answer. Chang Chiao, you beat Cheeky the Penguin, he'll send you away. Uh, but the engage starts again. Tidal Wave misses, sent out Chelly. Uh, so the Vayne's ahead, but still, 
OMG able to deal with the rest of Rogue Warriors in this bottom lane. Everybody is collapsing. Silas is last and he has no ultimate. The Rogue Warriors need to be slow and they might just lose his inhibitor. Yeah, they will. Look at Iko. You want to go near me? Huh? His front huh? line. Look at that front line. You want to go near me? Look at that minion. Dead. That's legit a front line bait. Now, Martin does have the Cyan ulti. So if it's going to start, it's going to start from him. But OMG, no better. They've already got an inhibitor. Baron buff doing work. And they're just going to back away. Point that I want to touch on for Rogue Warriors, even though they are behind in this game, is that I quite like the ultimates coming out from Huang Guy. Because he hasn't picked up any kills from them, but every single time he's used it in the mid lane, they've got so much vision advantage for themselves. Finally, the control wards are being placed down for OMG in the Baron Pit, but you need to remember that for the longest time, that was actually Blue War Dominator. So Rogue Warriors being very smart about how they use their ultimates, it's just a shame that they're not getting any sort of advantage out of it in terms of uneven fights that they could definitely take. Look at this point in the game as well, with Baron Buff still up and available, those fights look even harder to obtain for Rogue Warriors. Top lane, right now, like that is a sign with the Sunfire, uh, an Iceborne Gauntlet, he's built for the 1v1 against Renekton, and Renekton cannot withstand him, he has a Spear of Shoujin. Jung Chao so far behind, but opting into this item is just going to make it even harder for him to regain control. He just wants to take down Icon 100-0, make sure that your abilities can land fully onto the vein, but it looks very difficult because if she tumbles back, I mean, she's got, he's the got e point and click, really. So if they don't land on a Renekton, I'm very concerned, Preacher. Still, it's very difficult because you can be knocked back. Of course. Yeah. OMG, next turret, let's go. Icon's pop the ulti. Hit me with your best shot, Icon. Oh boy. Final Hunter. The hour has been set. Redemption comes down. Oh, Colonel. Yeah, that's a 94%. I'm ready to see. Rogue Warriors in their own base just losing out. OMG pressure forward. 26 Ali. minutes. Ali is taking a couple of shots here. Scond of Duck runs away. Train. Choo -choo. He's out. Baron still available for one. Gonskis. And Rogue Warriors, their base is in tatters. It's, it's, all, it's all crumbling down. They can literally just play completionist mode. Go into mid lane 100% all of the structures down from Rogue Warriors and win it through that way. There's not a lot stopping OMG and... Uh, if Watia doesn't steal Ale's ultimate, there's not a lot of engage potential that Rogue Warriors can really use to uh, thwart OMG before the group. At this point, I wanted to see what OMG would look like here with five back in the mix, with uh, Chelly, of course, uh, been in the bottom lane with him for quite a while now. OMG, it's been quite a while itself since they've returned to fame, since they've re returned to stardom. Uh, back in the Royal Club days, they were the team to beat. Back Royal Club, they beat that team. But <laughs> OMG, you're at a point where you're going, right, what do we know about this team? We know that Icon is the core of this roster. It's star power in this mid lane talent. And when he plays like this, you start to believe that OMG still had that star potential. <laughs> And when you talk about most teams, you talk about their carries being their mid laner and their ADC. Yeah, Resident Sleep for that up. However, for OMG, it's really the jungle in their mid lane because Penguin usually plays a whole lot of carries. Very abnormal for him this game, so it does prove that he can have multiple different roles onto this team. That is a fake Chaos Storm, by the way. As Icon split pushing. Ready? 1v1. Renekton first. Locked on down. Dominus Icon Whoa. behind enemy lines. Trying to fight his way out from the Olaf. Oh Icon still alive. Kiting through. Final Hunter. Jump down stuns him. Oh, man. I saw that Pentakill coming as Ali tries to support his mid lane and flashed out. Tumble bumble and yeah, eaten by five has to be the flash force through as well. Jung Chao's healed up and up, but Ali has as well. Jelly getting popped through too. Inhibitor turret goes down with the cost for OMG. Oh, no. They turn back around the fight. Penguin gets knocked up, locked up. Aqua Prison set to hell. Rogue Warriors defend their base, but that's because Icon wanted to really style on that play. Yeah, it took four people on a wild goose chase all the way into their uh, base. It was within all of those turrets, so OMG was saying, Icon, buy us more space, and Icon was saying, how much more space can I get all the way to their fountain? That's pretty much where he drew them, and it nearly happened. 
I mean, I know that you saw the pentakill. I saw the pentra as well. That could have very well happened. Minions are coming in. He bought enough time just to put more damage. We'll have a look at how Icon was so close. Here. All right. It was a stun up, but then he Q's away, flashes, and then another Q. I'm just oh. going to call all of them. Dodge is out the axe. And then Wadia tries to engage, but it has to be the flash that comes out from Jung Chao in order to take him down. There was a lot burned. Look at the flashes that went down. The only one left was one guy. Everyone else, apart from the Caitlyn, excuse me, burnt the flash to get that fame. Round two, anybody? Oh, let's go again. I want to see that I'm, again without the flash. I'm convinced. You got no summoners. Icon is so darn fair. That is a frozen mallet on the vein mid. One more item left. Most likely going to be a GA if we get there, but with Baron buff, I'd say that is a negative. OMG looking to put the final nails in. This is pretty much poggers because OMG, they've got such a convincing lead for themselves, and yet they just threw it a little bit by trying to take more than their composition could have at that uh, at that point in time. But with this buff, and with nothing else available onto the map, you know that their eyes could only go into one place, and that is, once again, the enemy base. Alright OMG, let's fix this one up. Icon, gonna have to make sure all autos connect here. Uh, Jung Chao was lucky to be alive, but Icon, Ultimate backup and available. The final hour. Flash only available on the Penguin, so we're not going to see any Flash outplays. It has to be straight fighting. Who's going to start the engage? Got to be Penguin, of course. All inhibitors going down. The bottom one just respawned, so good timing now for OMG to rotate and pick that up or just channel into the base. Don't forget, OMG, you can't be dilly-dallying. You're at the point at which you can finish the game. If you don't, then you're putting yourself into a really bad position because all of a sudden, you're funneling a lot of gold in. So to pull the trigger in, close it before Rogue Warriors can farm all of this up. Surely at this point you say, right, Penguin, let's just do it. Let's hope that Icon just has a great time again. That's a siren ult to the bottom side. What's going, what's going on there? Did I hear a siren ult? No, just delirious. At this point, that's fair enough. This game is... Making me on edge. Wuji run. Here we go. The there it is. Finally there. Watch for Icon. The final hour begins again. Not just away from the title wave, but a great Akron prison as the Locket comes back out and saves the day. Icon hitting onto the inhibitor, but the final hour hasn't done its job. Instead, OMG are going for a, a pretty straightforward ending. First Nexus, second Nexus turret drops on down. The Dragon Flag finds all its victims. And as the Chaos Storm comes all the way in, Icon will move his way into the back line, take down the victor as well, and OMG will take down game one. If Rogue Warriors didn't really have any target for that last fight, couldn't take any of the members of OMG down, split damage means that OMG, with such a massive lead, depending on Icon, can just take that fight. All right, Preacher. Vayne looked great, wouldn't you say? I would, but... I wouldn't want to see it again, in all honesty, because... Why? Look, that is, that that is was a wrong an, answer. I'm that sorry. That is an anomaly. I'm telling you, it's into a Silas no, mid. that is Icon. I'm not saying that that's Icon. I'm saying that that's into a Silas that mid. That was Icon. You so don't have condition. to say it. I'm going to tell you right now, that was Icon. Right. That was 32k damage on a vein. Like, get out of here. This, this is this dumb. Woo, yeah. I mean, we're pretty much ready to see that fight pretty much again because I needed to break down what happened with Icon to make sure that he didn't actually I mean we are going to see that fight again that was game one OMG and Rogue Warriors like let's just keep spinning the wheel